Our generation is the wealthiest in the history of mankind. None of our ancestors ever lived in a world with such rapidly increasing wealth. The evidence can be seen from the steep rise in wealth creation over the past 40 odd years. Yet, many of us still live a life of maxed out credit cards and paycheck to paycheck survival. Often intrigued and intimidated by questions such as can we become financially independent with our small income? Have I got enough in the bank for an unexpected event? Is the stock market even relevant for an ordinary person like myself? Most importantly, can we achieve our goals whilst managing the associated financial risks? The answers to all such questions will be given in this video today, titled, The Only Financial Literacy Video You Will Ever Need. Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Practical Finance, your guide on day-to-day -day finance questions. Today, we will do a comprehensive analysis of basic covenants of financial literacy, and how they are crucial no matter your financial status. We have divided the video into six chapters, followed by the conclusion. Our financial literacy chapters will be income, expenses and budgeting, assets and savings, stocks and index funds, compound interest and time value of money, and lastly debt and liability. 1. Income. Every theory on financial literacy comes to life with the first step being income. How much total cash flow can you generate every month? This money can come through work also known as the value you bring to the market and it can come from your investments which keep growing along with the market. This phenomenon is often called the active and passive income, respectively. The law of comparative advantage comes in handy here. The more effort you put into increasing your value by increasing your skill set, the more money you can earn. As money by itself is just a piece of paper, it is given in more or less quantity by the value you produce. The choice of being the first guy at work and being the last guy to leave is yours. How much time and effort you are willing to put in depends on you. No matter what your job is, the formula to succeed in it is hard work, and even if your current job does not value you properly, the skills you learn will eventually fetch you a better job with higher pay. Generation of more income by leveraging your skills to provide value is the very basic step of financial literacy. 2. Expenses and budgeting. Do you have a complete idea of how much money you spend and do you have a method to track it? Do you even know where all your money goes? Many people don't. If there is only one financial literacy skill that you would take away from this video, our advice would be to choose the ability to construct your financial budget and learn how to execute that. Now, let us understand what it is. The main thing to note while making your budget is your fixed expenses that you cannot control or change overnight, for example, rent, car payments, AMI payments, utility bills. The basic rule would be total income should be greater than total fixed expenses. Once that is taken into account, the remaining money with you is open to being utilized in the best possible manner you deem fit. Understand this point, if you have an income of $5,000 every month and a fixed expenses of $3,000 every month, post that $2,000 are what you have every month to play with. The game then is of percentages, what percentage of the $2,000 you have will you allocate to what particular activity? One rule you could use is the 50-25-25 rule for your excess income. For example, out of $2,000 that you save every month, 50% or $1,000 can be invested in your chosen investment option, 25% or $500 can be saved in your bank and the remaining $500 could be spent on lifestyle considerations. What you need to keep in mind, a lack of proper budgeting keeps you a chaser. You spend more than you receive, and when the moment arrives, like a hike or a bonus, you can't enjoy it as you have to pay off the previous bills. So, be cognizant of this fact and learn this very important rule. Keep track of your cash flows and try to limit your fixed expenses. 3. Assets and Savings Assets are stuff you own. Everything from your savings account to your car to your investments in the stock markets are essentially assets. Now, the first step to owning any significant asset is to have the purchasing power to do so. The road to building assets begins by saving. No matter if you are a high school student with a part-time income or a professional with a full-time job, you must learn to save money. Starting young can help you a long way, as it has been observed that saving is a habits game, the faster you develop the habit, the better it is in the long run for you. 
It doesn't matter if the amount is frugal like $5 or $10, it does not matter, what matters is the development of this all-important habit, that not only makes your money but also keeps you disciplined. 4. Stocks and Index Funds In continuation from the last point, the income you have after your fixed expenses and your savings is now to be utilized to generate more money. Remember, money attracts money. Now, you should not put all your eggs in one basket, and this is where the concept of stocks and index funds comes into the picture. Now, on this channel, we have a plethora of investment options and you can choose the one that suits you the most. The main idea is to put your money in an investment option that generates a higher than the inflation interest rate. So, if the inflation rate in your country is 6%, you should choose investment options giving a return of more than 6%. It is of course not that simple, and a diversified portfolio also comprises options that don't give much return but are extremely safe and provide a safety net. Check out our video on the best assets to invest in your 20s and 30s to learn more, link in the description. 5. Compound interest and time value of money. One of the most powerful tools in your arsenal is the power of compounding, as Sir Albert Einstein once said, the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Once again, it is obvious that compounding can be used to your benefit maximally when you start young. The best part is you don't even need a large amount, to begin with, as your income grows you can dedicate a larger chunk to investments, but an early start helps you leverage your position in the long run. Want to see the compounding magic, check out this example. A small amount of $2000 per year saving at an 8% interest rate. Person A starts his investment journey at age 25, and Person B does the same at age 50. Person A turns 65 with a total of $606,487, unbelievable, isn't it? What will blow your mind, even more, is Person B turns 65 with only $65,500. This example should make it crystal clear to you the importance of compounding and the value of time in increasing the total value of your investment. With enough time and a good rate of return, you can let the power of compounding take care of you. 6. Debt and Liability A lot of people get into trouble by spending more than they earn, their expenses are more than their income. What further compels this problem is the easy access to credit that is available, that's both good and bad. It is good as credit can enhance your ability to take an attractive investment like a college education or a home, but at the same time credit can be bad if you spend the credit on consumer durables and let go of your financial discipline. Credit is beneficial if you get a college degree with it, the same credit can be detrimental if you decide to spend it on a luxury car that you could not in a normal scenario afford for yourself. This concept ties into debt, the credit you undertake has to be returned with interest, so, if you choose to spend your student loan partying all the time or max out your credit card every time you go shopping, you are digging yourself deeper into trouble. The debt, in that case, becomes a liability that needs to be paid off and the worst part is you don't have any extra income coming in, so you will have to pay that debt from your wealth pool. This can increase anxiety and simply put is a poor financial decision. Using your credit card for buying things that are consumables like clothes, food, electronics, vacations, etc. is a bad idea, you are not creating any asset, instead, you are consuming things you can't afford at a price higher than the original price, as you will have to pay interest on your credit card too. So, the asset is gone, it is zero but the debt is still there, all in all, you just made yourself poorer. Avoidance of credit card debt at the early stage of one's career is probably the best blessing a young person can give themselves. Conclusion I hope the video was informative and practically useful, let's us summarize and go through our financial literacy checklist. Increase income sources. Maximize investment money using a budget. Save to build up assets. Have a diversified portfolio and use the power of compounding to generate wealth from wealth. Limit expenses and liabilities. This brings us to the end of the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care of yourselves and your families, God bless us all. Thank you.